Hey guys, thanks for joining us again. This is Words Are Tough, episode nine. I'm here with my co-host. David Diokendo. And my name is Jose Rodriguez. Um, we're slowly making some changes on this podcast, so if you notice some different lighting and things like that, we're going to be working on that over the next few episodes. Um, leave us you know, some comments if you notice anything that you like, um, things like that. And also hit the like button if you do notice a difference. Um, today on our episode, we're going to be discussing some of... Uh, more cinematic things that we we came across while we were um, checking out during the pandemic and things like that, and also looking forward into the future, some projects that um, that we're excited about. And I know you had some, some yeah that you were interested in. I do. Um, I guess the backtrack. We're kind of building the plane while we're flying it, or vice versa. We're flying the plane while you're building it, <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. So uh, as episodes progress you'll see some big and or small changes so um, which is a good thing i think a lot of um i guess you can say products i guess in this case a podcast usually like the professionals have everything set up like months in advance and it looks polished and perfect right out of the gate um we're not we're yeah not, we're not that <laughs> yeah we're, it's definitely <laughs> definitely easier when you have a nice team uh, you know, standing back there. Yeah, and, there's uh, no one behind the camera. <laughs> there's actually literally just uh, my <laughs> stick ball bat uh, that's <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> but um, yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying it and we'll be making changes, yeah. of course. Um, yeah, so, you know, we have a lot of projects that kept us busy during the pandemic. Um, and then sometimes when you needed some time, you know, to yourself, just get your mind off of things. You wanted to use something as an escape and, yeah, um, like movies. Yeah, a lot of us yeah. use movies, shows. So we wanted to share some stuff that maybe some of yeah. you had not checked out yet. And just in case, you could check it out. Um, so I know you have um, so a, a list for yourself, and I have a prepared one myself. Um, do you want to start um, with your first one? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, before we jump right into it, like the, I guess the idea came about because... Um, I don't know if you ever saw like Game of Thrones or... Um, or the rings or any sort of or braveheart where you have a bunch of archers and uh the person's like hold and then like yeah. now and then they shoot all the arrows all at once yeah i feel like that's what's gonna happen when it comes to movies it's like a bunch of these studios have been holding on these movies and then like within the next six to eight months you're gonna have a lot of movies coming out and you're probably going to miss a lot of them. Like, there's a lot you're going <laughs> to miss out of. Yeah. But the one movie I'm actually really looking forward to, I mean, we'll go to a mutual one first, is Candyman. Yes. The, the, the trailer came out about a year and some change ago, um, right before the pandemic hit. Um, and it might have been late uh, December 20... Um, 19 early 2020 this and what got first of all if you put a destiny's child like song in the trailer and make it sound creepy <laughs> um that's a pretty successful thing and by the way Candyman, um i guess i don't think it's a sequel i think is it a sequel is it a continuing the lore i don't think so um i think it's a like a reimagined or of. a retake yeah um from my understanding, the 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 child from the last Candyman, the baby, the main character is that baby. He just grown up. Um, okay. But I don't know if it's canon, like if it's within the canon of Candyman. But um, Jordan Peele is directing it, which is so bizarre because I don't know if you grew up watching um, Mad TV or yeah. Um, Key and Peele happened when I was already an adult, but um, it was just kind of bizarre seeing like this comedian that seemed just kind of like almost like a fool in a way, not in a fool in a good way, not in a bad way. But then now he's like making these like horror like flicks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an odd uh, uh, trend. I mean, in my uh, point of view, it's kind of an odd transition. There is. Um, um he did drop little hints like when I when I look back and think back on some of the things like there'd be like some and they'd feel out of place because it's like a comedy show. But then there'd be like a really creepy like little thing that he does. And you'll be like, that's creepy. That's and I don't know. Dark. <laughs> yeah. And now you know why, because he yeah. obviously yeah, not in, had an outlet to put that out. Yeah. In Key and Peele, there's definitely um, <clears throat> there's some dark humor in that. Um, I can't I, I can't remember exact 
like bits, but like uh like the one that the slap ass bit, um where he's a baseball Dominican baseball player just having he just has to <laughs> slap people's butt, but then he slaps a guy's butt so hard he dies. It, it's like. <laughs> It's funny, but that's dark. Like, okay, you just murdered a guy. Yeah. And then there's because you're, you're an addict <laughs> of slapping people's butts. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like the the little kitty one with what they have like the little cats and then like they're just like they want to kill them because those are so cute and they're like, Yeah, I just want to make little pizza frisbees out of yeah. your face. And you're like, Whoa. <laughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt a little bit, but we have um some special words from our new sponsors. Um and David, you could take it away on our new on board thank you so this episode is sponsored by nbox a modern mailing center designed to meet the security needs of our time whether it's shopping for our favorite pr- products or paying monthly bills statistics show a transition to online convenience it's a quick and simple it's quick and simple which is why we love it unfortunately it's created a new kind of criminal that seeks to steal your identity identity or take packages right from your porch. At in- Inbox, your postal mail isn't delivered to a mailbox that thieves can access in order to discover your private information. Instead, your mail is scanned and uploaded to a secure app you can access from anywhere in the world. You control what's opened, forwarded, shredded, or discarded with just a few clicks. Sweeten the deal, you no longer have to worry about ordering expensive items online. Only only to have them sit in front of your residence unattended. Simply shop online as you normally would ship, normally would, and ship everything directly to their secure facility. You'll, re- you'll receive an instant arrival not a notification so you can stop by for pickup or arrange a custom delivery at a time when you're home to receive it. As a listener, we're almost there, you can enjoy $5 off the, life, the lifetime of your s- subscription to an inbox package plan when you enter tough words uh, without spaces at checkout that's tough words visit www.nboxdelivers.com to learn more awesome yeah we want to say thank you so much to nbox um the service is awesome i i love that um you know what they're doing and it's in the you know Voorhees area we're going to put the description to the website so you know what service area they they offer these services to um and it's definitely um you know a step ahead in the direction of um securing your privacy and security of all your valuable stuff so i really am um, thankful to them to joining us on this journey and um definitely looking at their services for future use and uh, the other two sponsors that we have um our number one is Rick's Barbershop I have the the bottle here. Um, if you're in the Garfield area, um, you know, if you need a haircut, anything like that, definitely shoot, you know, an email to them. They, I have the website in the description as well. And this, the third sponsor, um, our day one, Premier Rank Marketing. If you have any website services, you need any advertising on Facebook, Google, TikTok even, you know, they're, they're expanding their horizons always. Uh, reach out to Premier Rank Marketing or us. And um, they are offering a 10% discount as well if you come through the show. So, um, you know, if again, if you want us to reach out for you, just reach out um, through the email and we can hook you up with them. Um, so thanks so much for this little interruption and yeah. back to the show. I mean, that's <laughs> I actually did th- talk to a friend about that. How some I mean, it's I hate to say women, but when guys do it, it just sounds off when you see a little child like, I just want to eat your feet. And <laughs> yeah. it, it, the, but if a guy says it, it, you can hear how wrong that sounds. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I hear I've, I've known a lot of friends, um, female friends that would like see a child and pinch their cheeks and I just want to eat you up. And I'm like, don't you think that sounds kind of odd, <laughs> kind of weird? But I mean, why are you I mean, I have my reasons, but why are you looking forward to this rendition of Candyman? Uh, well, I know that like a lot of the movies that have been remade, they're kind of like tying in, um, you know, like uh, social issues and things like that. And I just want to I'm very interested to see how this uh, this take uh, retake or, you know, this, the second coming of it is going to really encapsulate like what we're going through now, because I do know that there that is a part of the movie. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I really liked Candyman. It was like, one of my favorite like race and. 
yeah, with Andy and, and political issues and things like that. Um, you know, it's very interesting to me how they're going to do it. And, you know, it's that that's pretty much what's and plus the story. Of course, I, I was a big fan of Candyman. Um, for me, it's like, I guess, like, you know, I guess the like dude version of Bloody Mary kind of, you know? Yeah. <laughs> So, but Candyman black, has a hook black, too. Black dude version of Black yeah, Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and um, yeah, and also that that first one was very iconic. Like the way the guy portrayed Candyman was, I think, was spot on, and he just made the character. Um, so yeah, it's it's a movie I'd love to see when it comes out. Yeah, it's, it's one of the few, one of the first, I guess you can say, bad guys that I was able to s- empathize with or sympathize with. I don't know which is the correct one, but. It was one of the first people or, or evil villains or um, antagonists that you're like, actually, I can see why he's upset. I would be upset, too. Like, and you, do you know his sort of lo- the lore behind it? Like, why is he? I remember. Why does he have a hook? And why was, is he coming out of a mirror? When I was younger, I remember seeing the movie. I don't I don't remember right off the top of my head yeah. right now. Pretty but. much. I mean, in a nutshell, um, it's the I guess turn of the century, like post slavery, um, artist painter uh, paints one of his, uh, not his, but like a neighbor who is a, a white girl and they fall in love. And then the people don't like that. Yeah. And then they chase him out of the town, they lynch him, chop off his hand. And uh, the, what ha- what's the next thing? Oh, yeah. Then they like pour honey all over him and bees attack him and, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty dark, but and like the last thing he sees before he dies is he has he hold, he's holding the mirror that his lover gave him, and he sees himself, and then he dies. So it's pretty dark. That's pretty yeah. dark. But that's why the whole you say his name in front of the mirror like four. I, I don't know, is it three times, five times? I forget you, a number of times. I think it's three, three times, yeah. and then you turn off the lights, and then he appears. It so he's a bad guy for a reason. I mean, I don't want to justify. Hey, yeah, yeah, murder a bunch of people, but, um, but yeah, if like if if that's your s- story, it's like yeah, how do you not understand? <laughs> not, I won't say advocate, but understand that kind of thing. But, um, and I guess the whole premise is that people find they don't take him seriously, or they don't take what happened to him. They take it what happened to him lightly, and almost saying his name three times in the mirror is like a mockery of him, I suppose. I'm kind of butchering this, I think. And then that's where he kills you with the hook. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty dark story, but something like, okay, there's, 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 there's connections to historical happenings. Um, I don't think that actually happened. I mean, maybe that happened to someone. I don't know. But I can see why Jordan Peele was appealed, uh, up to, you know, to this story and want to kind of continue it or have his own sort of take on it or rendition of it. Yeah. I believe the same actor that played Candyman in the first few films, he's taking the role again. Okay, great. So I don't know how old he is. He's definitely much (laughs) older. Um, Yeah. But yeah, it's pretty impressive. That's pretty cool. I don't know. It's one of those movies where, uh, and also the, I'm not giving anything away because it's in a trailer, but like the, the protagonist, the man in the movie, he's actually an artist and likes, he's sort of almost advocating or indoor, um, in favor of Candyman is trying to discover who he is and what's the historical roots behind it. Is it true? Is it not true? So me being an artist, I'm like, yeah, I love, I love watching. Um, and, and I'm hoping they depict how an artist process, I'm hoping they capture his process somewhat correctly. Cause I think some movies capture the art process completely, almost too romantic, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, speaking of trailers, we're going to also put a description in the description uh, clips of the trailers. Yeah. yeah so links. you guys can check out all the movies that we're talking about. Um, yeah, so that's one that we're really excited about. And just to stay on the horror type mm-hmm. of uh, uh, genre right now, I'm really excited for the new Halloween um, there's been a lot of misses recently with the Halloweens and there were the Rob Zombie Halloweens, which some people don't like, but there's going to be another one, which includes Jamie Lee Curtis. So that's always, how many Halloweens are there now? 15, uh, been like 17, 16. Yeah. Cause I knew there were like 10 and then she did like, 
the, the new Halloweens and then Rob Zombie did a few. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm a sucker for for like those horror movies like uh, Jason and, you know, Friday the 13th, um, Halloween and all of those types. Freddy Krueger, you know. Um, so I'm really excited to see this one. And um, it's coming out as soon, I think at the end of the summer. Um, I hear there's only two actual Halloween movies that are canon, like the first one and the one where she's much older and she kind of comes back to the town. Um, I've only seen the first one. I've never seen any other Halloween other than that. And I know, but there's, from my hear, I, that none of, other than the first one and the one where she actually comes back and tries to hunt him down are the only two that are actual, like, the story. And everything else is more, like, different takes on that story. Yeah, there are there are some inconsistencies. There's like a lot from, of inconsistencies. From, yeah, from, <laughs> from film to film. And um, there's also, like, the, you know, and I guess you could say, like, the Halloween Reddits. Um, there's, like, the Michael Myers with eyebrows and the one without eyebrows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and supposedly the one with eyebrows is, like, a lot more violent. So huh. I, I mean the one with yeah I think I said with eyebrows with but yeah eyebrows. he's the more violent one so people are excited because the new movie he's Honestly, gonna have eyebrows I didn't even realize that I just realized that there's sometimes he has eyebrows and sometimes he doesn't have eyebrows yeah and he's gonna have eyebrows just so you know so it's gonna be violent <laughs> do you know how they made the mask are you, are you yes familiar? I do actually oh. if you want to you want to explain it well I mean you're a bigger fan than I am so yeah I mean. I like the movies, um, but yeah. So I'll just explain it. Um, that they were they were looking for some type of mask and they couldn't find it, and um, they eventually made a cast from William Shatner's face. Yeah, and um, so that's really Michael Myers is really William Shatner. It's really it's <laughs> Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. Captain. <laughs> like the Michael Myers mask is just Captain Kirk's, like in white, without and and or with eyebrows once in a while. <laughs> yeah, they throw eyebrows when they decide they want. <laughs> I mean, honestly, um, like I understand Freddy Krueger's story. I understand Jason's story. I, but I didn't. I never quite understood Michael Myers' story. Is he just like a, just a really bad childhood as demon possessed? I, I, I can't. Yeah, quite... he, his is more of like the cautionary tale of like a mentally disturbed kid. Because mm. I remember in the first one, and it's also the one that the first Rob Zombie remake, um, he kills um, one of the family members. Uh, or the babysitter. I'm not sure exactly. I've, I've seen too many of these. <laughs> but uh, he, I know he killed when he's really young. So then he gets arrested and they take him away as a child. And then that's when he escapes later on from the high, you know, high security facility. And um, yeah. And then that's how the story goes. He's definitely like one of those like he's not meant to be out in public. He's yeah. He's a doesn't. menace to society. <laughs> and so to speak. But um, it's I think. The one thing I dislike about some, not all, but some horror flicks is that they make a lot of the characters kind of dumb. They kind of nerf them a lot and make the bad guy like OP. Like they make them way overpowered in in, in intellect. And like, because the bad guy never makes mistakes somehow. Like he just knows where to be all the time. And like the people being chased around, they just don't all of them make the worst decisions except for like one person that happens to survive at the end but as i mean i'm hoping they little by little i think horror movies are going away from that oversimplified trope of just like one smart person everyone's dumb black guy dies first yeah that um, always happens. <laughs> and like somehow the 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 bad guy just knows everything they know what they're going to do all the time they don't even run they just walk everywhere and somehow they're some hurt like i don't know like that's i'm happy i'm hoping that it's like that trope is slowly it just it's harder to it's even actually more funny for me when to see someone running around and <laughs> the bad guy just walking and yeah and somehow he's just still <laughs> somehow catching he's up just there then they trip <laughs> <laughs> it's really bizarre. and uh, actually the games um I'm actually a, a huge fan of Let's Plays. And you know what a Let's Play is? No. A Let's Play is when a person simply records themselves playing a video game and they put it up on the internet. Okay. And you can watch them play the game. It's called a Let's Play. Gotcha. And it's a common, I forgot, I don't even know the name of the game, but there's a game where you, it's like a multiplayer thing where you can either be 
the bad guy and you could pick either between Jason or Freddy Krueger or Candyman or um, you pick the bad guy and then the other people are just trying to run away from you and like escape and it's pretty interesting I, if you know the name of that game I have no clue but it's pretty fun to watch but kind of interesting each sort of bad guy has their own like special power or so to speak but yeah let's plays i'm sure i'm surprised you never heard of that you know what though i have played that game but not that specific one um when playstation 4 i think came out they released the the friday the 13th game and you could just be jason and or you could be the other characters and that's how it kind of works but i guess you know once they made that one they're like oh let's make all the yeah there's one where you can be any uh I guess uh legendary horror flick bad guy. Awesome. Which pretty- Can you be uh Chucky? I don't think so. Oh, that'd be I, great. I honestly I don't I'm the type so the reason why I like Let's Plays this is a complete sidetrack, but the reason why I like like Let's Plays, I'm the youngest of three and um there's only two controllers growing up. So I was always usually the one that would just watch. Yeah. I actually enjoy just watching people play video games and um, in a way, it's kind of like nostalgic kind of thing. Me watching someone else play a video game, and then and I'll just do my work or paint something or draw something, and they're just playing a video game on the side. Yeah, and it's, I know I notice a lot of people do that with like um, Call of Duty and things like that too. Yeah. So I just didn't know that that was the term. Let's play. It's called <laughs> Let's Play. And nice. The, uh, terrible segue, but the second movie that I'm looking forward to. Um, is Dune. Nice. And so Dune was made back in 84 by David Lynch. It sucked. It was terrible. It, <laughs> it did not age well. Like if you watch a Blade, uh, I'm sorry, Blade, Blade Runner, not mm-hmm. Blade, completely different movie. Blade Runner from the 80s and you watch it now, it's aged really well. It still holds up really well. And, um, or is it late night, eight, seven? late 70s i forget but it was made some time ago when harrison ford was still fairly young um and now you watch it now it holds up great it pretty good but dune from 1984 does not hold up well the acting is just kind of clunky and not the greatest um but they are remaking it um dune with timothy chalamet or is it timothy or timothy Chalamet was Zendaya. Let me actually actually have a list of the actual cast. So it's directed by Denis Villeneuve, who made several pretty good movies. Um, one of them is um, um, Arrival, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, great movie. So there's Timothy Chalamet, Dave Bautista, Zendaya, Jason Momoa, Oscar Isaac, Josh Brolin. <laughs> And Javier Bardem. That's a pretty good cast. Yeah, that's definitely. a few. That's many millions of dollars just on your cast. I don't know how much money they spent on this, but um, it was gonna come out uh, during the quarantine, and they're like, "No, nah, we can't." This is one of those movies that you need to watch it in a big screen, like it, it almost like you know, watching Avatar. Um, it, you have to watch it on a screen, definitely. You yeah. know, like on IMAX. So. Dune, if it comes out on IMAX, I'm what I'm gonna watch on IMAX. Yeah, uh, I I definitely have had some debates like this on online with some people. How they're saying that um, you know they they could just watch it on Fire Stick at home, things like that. But <laughs> yeah, there's no. just some movies you can't. And no. one thing I did want to tell people because once we started arguing about like the experience and watching it at home and all this, some people are like, oh, but you're way more comfortable and this and that. There's a, a whole new third experience if some people have not yet checked out. Um, and I know a lot haven't, but um, there's the Oculus. You, have oh, you seen yeah, that? Oculus. Yeah, there's an Oculus version where you can watch a movie like in bed, essentially. Or there's a, close to it is like an iPad. And I've done this where I'll watch a movie like at night in the dark, like just with the iPad and, and headphones. Like, is it like a foot away from your face? <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> like I'll either lay sideways and I have like the, the case that holds it up. And it does give a different dimension than TV and it's different from theater too because like the sensory deprivation from the headphones. You're oh, like, and you have headphones. Though. Yeah, you're, so you like you're, your whole, you know, it's in theaters, the sound system helps a lot, but like you're in that like theater, you know? Yeah, if you're far away, you see people walking in front of you. Yeah. And stuff like that. This is why I could never watch those bootleg. I, I, I uh, used to get my hair done in Patterson when I was a 
kid and every time some random person will walk in and want to like sell like a bootleg thing I remember one time my mom actually bought one many years ago and it was the worst thing i think it was like the mask or something where <laughs> it was just the audio was just terrible and like you would see a random person walk in front of the screen and walk off as like yeah. how do people and people legit buy like have libraries of yeah. just bootleg there's people CDs there's two types of people in this world dvds that can't watch a bootleg i can't watch and a bootleg. can watch a bootleg i cannot watch bootleg <laughs> if you can watch a bootleg uh <laughs> let me know yeah leave it in I, the comments if you could watch a bootleg um i don't know i have d like I'm, i maybe i'm too much of an artist but like, don't you care about the art like the one of the reasons why i don't like buying the bootleg is because none of the proceeds or any of that money goes to the artists the studio i mean i know you might say yeah but they have millions and billions and billions of dollars yeah, still but if you support the movie buy it That's like true. pay pay for it yeah, that's kind of like the same debate and not to get off track, but I'll just mention like people have when they people um, pirate pay-per-views for UFC. Yeah. You know, it's like the, the the fighters aren't getting money and things like that, but you know, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so support <laughs> So, I don't know. Support is, support is good. Support artists, but, support fighters and musicians. I mean, the the reason why I really want to see Dune is one, it's like the I guess you can say by uh, written by Frank Herbert. It's like literally the like godfather of like con- of modern day science fiction. Like almost every science fiction film you've probably seen has has been inspired by Dune. Um from Alien to Star Wars to Blade Runner um so it, it was like one of those it was a first uh take on like the sci-fi future dystopian kind of era like kind of take before that it was very much like buck rogers and like it was very much like um viewing the future in a positive light yeah like everything's be better like doom was like the first time I was like uh-uh like it's going downhill fast yeah like we're not getting any better before that it was just the jetsons yeah like the jetsons everything is like better and awesome and shiny like dune is like nope and like everyone is like um drugged up on this thing called spice melange and like it's very interesting and um sadly i'd actually never people might um be upset with me i've actually never read the book i know a lot of it because my partner my fiance talks about it all the time and um so there's a dune from 1984 and then there's jodorowsky's dune who it was supposedly the film the best film never made okay it was a film that all the blueprints and all the what do you call it when you just had the the sketches i forgot the, what you call it. yeah they're like uh i know what you're talking Not about like time. Scene, the scenes um, all the scenes are sketched out they yeah. had they had the right storyboard the storyboards yeah. they had the 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 musicians, they had all the actors that might be in it, everything, and then it was just never, nothing happened. And it was never made. And Jordan Orsker is still alive, and he's like, he can't make it now because everyone that he wanted in the film are like either passed away or they're long retired. But um, so hopefully they um, get it right. I don't know. Like, not get it right, but do, you know, I always feel like, you know, if someone was you know gonna i guess you can say copy my artwork i much rather you do it right than poorly yeah i'm, I'm not in advocating how to copy my artwork but like i'm just saying <laughs> if you were gonna like do it right like get it you know make it like not perfect but like put in the time so i feel like if you're gonna get a book and put it up on the screen you know get it right you know yeah and, and also watch it in the correct context that you have to watch it um, I know you had a second or third. Yeah, this one. would be my third because we shared the first one. Yeah, we're kind of going through this kind of fast. If we get past the R three, then I might just talk about the crappy movies I saw during the quarantine to not yeah, watch. Yeah, we'll talk about. <laughs> um, okay, so my third one. Um, I'm not a big um like Marvel or like comic book movie guy. Um, although I enjoy them very much. Um, I don't you know I don't like anticipate them very much. But one that I always liked when it was coming out was um venom Mm -hmm. and um i also like tom hardy a lot which i thought was awesome that he was going to play venom they've already released one but the reason why i liked venom when i was a kid was because he had a a long-standing rivalry with carnage which was my favorite character 
Really? But, yeah, Carnage was um cuz he was like the red version of Venom, you know, like <laughs> kind of the crazy version. Yeah. Kind of ver- yeah. Yeah, so or then violent version. Yeah, I had the whole set of the comic books up Venom versus Carnage. So once I knew that they were making this movie, I'm like, there's no way they make one without Carnage. And maybe not in the first one, because, you know, Venom's story it evolves in its own. And now they cast Carnage as Woody Harrelson, which Just I think... With a wig on. <laughs> or with, yeah. I don't know how they... It, it, he's, he's, so, he's so bald, but they have them... Um, <laughs> that, that's really good, uh, I guess you could say makeup or whatever yeah like. i mean you you if you guys have a second check out youtube they've got like yeah in the hood you know they put like the braids on dudes and stuff and it looks <laughs> legit <laughs> like I've, I've never seen anything like it but like i'm talking about like braids like down and dreads down to here and they then they shape them up and it looks intense like and they do this at barbershops now that's, so that's commitment <laughs> i can't yeah i can't believe they I do mean, that i guess i could i just don't want to yeah <laughs> i don't want that so woody harrelson versus tom hardy I think it's going to be amazing, and I'm excited for that coming out. And he out. looks, Woody Harrison looks like, um, the name escapes me, looks like the character in the comics. Like, he looks yeah. a lot like him. Yeah. But I don't know, I forgot his name, sadly. Definitely. Yeah, that makes me excited, too, because if they ever do, you know, on, like, another, you know, how they do, like, all the um, the universe movies, they might bring him into it, get Woody Harrelson in one of those, you know. That's always good. And also, what I do like is they make the I'm talking about the first one they made the Venom um, character oh like they made him like I guess you can say sympathetic or they made him kind of funny like they, they needed that it couldn't be serious throughout because it would compl- it'll be it'll, it'll just turn people off I think there is like a lot of funny moments where he jumps into the, like the lobster tank and I guess spoiler alert he jumps into a lobster <laughs> tank lobster <laughs> tank and eats a I think he eats a live lobster. I don't think that's like a prop. Yeah, that wasn't. I don't think that wasn't even in the the script. Uh-huh. He just jumped into the lobster tank. <laughs> Lops, lobster tank. Sorry, but um, it's one of those uh, movies where, uh, first of all, Tom Hardy just he's the movie. Like he's in every single scene. I think. Um, and not every single, maybe like he's like a 99% of the movie and the voice is actually Tom Hardy that they, I think they recorded the lines ahead of time. Then they adjusted it. So it sounds deeper and more, I guess, evil. And then they put the earpiece in his ear and then they, so when he's talking to himself, he actually is talking to himself, Yeah, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I didn't know anything about that process, but yeah, he seems like the kind of guy that would step up to the plate. And want to do the voice as well, you know? Like, yeah. He's definitely that kind of actor. I mean, he's definitely, uh, in a uh, in large way, a method actor. Um, but he doesn't go full uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, method. Yeah. But he's, he's, I mean, I don't know what it is with these English actors, but, like, a lot of these English um, actors are ridiculous. Like, Yeah, you know, I think it has to do with, like, their like schools and like their heritage going back to like the beginning of theater so then they're like i need to uh, do this right yeah. adjust this because people here in america you know there's a lot of good schools um you know juilliard and things like that that date back um but um there it goes back to like 1200s like, you know theater, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. They go, so they don't have theater that's theater so they have to they feel like they have to pass the baton like yeah you like know. tom holland um Who's Doctor Strange again? Oh, uh, Doctor Strange. Dang it. What's his name? Anyway, that guy. Um, and uh, Tom Hardy. Like All these um, act. And you know the most bizarre thing about British people or English people? When they sing, they don't have an accent. Yeah. What is that? And they do <laughs> They do no accent very well, too. They, yeah, it, yeah. They can play an American accent. And they know, like, okay... North, like if I'm doing a Boston accent, they know how to do it. They, if you want to go to Florida, they don't do a Florida accent. Yeah, um, it's really bizarre how they can do that. But like, I can't do a British accent. Yeah. I don't even know where to. Christian start. Bale's good at that. Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale. He was in The Fighter. Yeah, but this is the but. Christian Bale's voice and Bat and The Dark Knight is just. Terrible. <laughs> you were in a fan. Terrible. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Just so 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 bad. It was probably the first and only time. An American actor, like, 
exceeded a British actor with like a uh, Heath Ledger, which is like, wait, is Heath Ledger? He's not even American. Heath Ledger is not American. He's no, a, never mind. I think isn't he Australian? I think it's Australian. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. That, that, that my <laughs> argument completely goes out the window. Yeah. But anyway, um, what was the movie that you said you were looking forward to? Oh yeah, Venom. But uh, we should watch the trailer. The I uh, like the the first fifteen seconds of the trailer. I was like dying laughing. Yeah, yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> Where he's uh, Venom is making um, Eddie Brock breakfast, and the way he does it is just really really bad and terrible and sings a song i say neither you say neither <laughs> yeah. you say either i say either i don't know it's a very I, I like that sort of take on it it's and it's it's fun i'm hoping eventually they put spider-man into the venom movie because that's then you can't really have venom without spider-man because that's how he was introduced to yeah. spider-man um comics um I think that's why he doesn't have the spider symbol yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping one day they eventually put that uh, Tom Holland or one of the spider men actors into the film. We'll see. Yeah, that definitely bring it full circle and would probably make the hugest uh, Venom movie out of all of them. Um, or crossover like Spider-Man vs. Venom or something like that. Yeah. Two British pe people playing Americans. <laughs> two, two birds playing New Yorkers, one from Queens, one from the Bronx, I guess, or something. <laughs> yeah. So bizarre. But speaking of British, see, actually, this might be the best segue. Speaking of British and English, my next movie that I'm looking forward to is called The Green Knight, aka Gawain and the Green Knight, um, with Dev Patel, uh, the guy that played in um, Slumdog Millionaire many years ago. He was actually 19 when he was in that. Wow. Right? I think he's like 31 now. He's in yeah. his 30s, so he's doing his thing. But um, And the director is David Lowry, which I'm not too familiar with. But when I found out that this was coming out last year, um, I forgot about it until I, I saw that a new trailer that just came out. And I was so excited because it's it's one of the few Arthurian, Arthur, like uh, Knights in a Round Table thing stories where it kind of breaks the trope of like hey knight goes out conquers dragon gets girl it's not that story at all it's yeah. very um and i'm not there's, there's no spoilers here because it's actually literally just in the trailer where a arthur has his knights in the round table they're having like a feast or gonna have a they're gonna prepare for a feast and then uh, the green knight shows up who's like eight feet tall all green He's like this sort of like forest creature and he has this big axe and he, he says, okay, I have a bet. Like, uh, this is like probably the first, uh, um, how do you say, uh, stories of punch for punch. Ever like do that, play that game, punch for punch? Yeah, like yeah. you punch someone, they punch you back and you just keep going until someone gives up yeah. kind of thing. Um, well, he literally says, okay, Arthur, I challenge you that, you know, um, if you can, sh I'll give you my axe and you can strike me. But the only deal is a year from now, I need to return the favor. So, uh, Gawain says, I'll do it. A younger knight, um, chop, chops off his head thinking, you know, I'll just chop off his head. And if he's dead, he can't kill me. He can't <laughs> chop off my head. And the guy just stands up with no head, picks up his head and says, I'll see you in like one year. <laughs> so imagine being like some young person and you're like i'm gonna die in a year like what do you do <laughs> i'm gonna die and then not only that he's like you need to meet me at this location it, in a way it's literally like the high school brawl like meet me after school yeah, after school <laughs> in, the, in the school in yard. the school yard <laughs> and but it's like a more obviously like nights and it's I like, I like the take where He's not, I mean, um, I don't think I'm spoiling anything, but like, it's not like, hey, I'm going to go conquer and go get the woman. It's more like, how do I protect myself and say no to these advances from another individual? Or it's like, I'm not going to go out and conquer this dragon, this bad guy. Actually, I'm going there. And by the way, he has the axe. He's holding it. So he has to go to the guy, give him his axe. It's like, imagine being that in that mindset. Like, I'm... 
I'm gonna die. Yeah, and, I'm gonna and, die. <laughs> yeah, from you know looking at the trailer, the the Green Knight it just looks terrifying. You know, yeah, like noble yet terrifying. And and um, I mean, all of this it's in the actual trailer. I mean, you can kind of some. But the what I hope they accomplish. I mean, the story is very much linear. Like you know, it's very much very simple. But there's a lot of symbolism in it, and I'm hoping the uh, film they capture all that symbolism because um, when you're reading the actual stories in the context when they were written, there's a lot of symbolism like what certain things are, what what time of the day, you know, what does you know this castle mean? What does a color green mean there's all this symbolism i'm hoping that they actually like capture that in the film and i mean if you see the trailer you can see oh yeah there's a lot of like what does the fox mean what does like you know that mean i I, i'm just hoping they capture all that and i'm hoping that it's an introduction to like the all the other knights that they yeah. can show because i've always liked the whole um king arthur and, and the round table but like they just never explain who the other knights are and if they have please let me know because i will let the watch those films but in i think in film it i think they there's a lot of you can work off of that for whatever reason cinema has never not has never because maybe i don't know but from my understanding hasn't really accomplished to like capture in a way it's like the original like avengers yeah definitely (laughs) you know when they haven't or the original Justice League, and they like, hey, there's all these characters that are pretty cool, um, but for whatever reason, like, you don't want to use any of them. I don't know if it's like copywritten. I don't know if you're not allowed to. Do yeah. I have no clue what the maybe that thing might is. be it. But um, yeah. another thing about that movie, it's the production studio is A24, mm-hmm. which lately I've just loved everything they do. Um, you know, some people in like the movie. I guess Reddits and groups they hate on A twenty four. I don't know. I don't even get that. Like why you do that? But visually, yeah. like from the trailer, you'll see like it just looks next level. Um, you know, it's like um, the quality's up there with like movies like I've seen like Lord of the Rings and things like that. Um, but yeah, this studio's doing great stuff. So definitely check out, check out the trailer that'll be in the description and um, let us know yeah. what you think. I can't wait to read Reddit comments. I, I'm saying this sarcastically. <laughs> Can't wait to read those Reddit comments like, oh, De Patel, he's not even, like, English. Like, he's brown. <laughs> I'm like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Just then don't watch it. I don't know. Like, it's so silly. It's, um, I think he is Indian, but very much born and raised in uh, England, I believe. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, he speaks perfect English than even me, so whatever. But yeah. he seems like he fits the role pretty well, and I, it seems like um, he's one of those actors where he doesn't. He might play in one movie a year, if that. But um, but every movie that he, what well, every role he's in, he like does it really well. Um, not like you know Daniel Day Lewis, where he plays one film every five to six years. Yeah. But he seems like he's not like every, you know he's on every single movie out there he's like you know like Dave Batista seems like he's in like every other movie you know yeah. he's, he was actually in um Army of the Dead and I fell as, I mean people might not like me right now but I fell asleep watching Army of the Dead I did not <laughs> I, I said I won't say I didn't li- didn't like it it was good but like if it's a zombie film scare me entertain me I don't know give me a reaction other than falling asleep and I was mentioning before, like, you know, if you're ma- making a comedy and the person doesn't laugh or doesn't find anything funny, maybe it's me, but I just didn't find that film entertaining. I, I, visually, it's pretty interesting. It was pretty cool and the, the different take on what, you know, a zombie is and where it originated and all that. But it just, uh, to me, just one of those films like, okay, I guess it was fun to watch. I felt I fell asleep and I guess I'll rewind it now and find the parts i missed but it wasn't anything that i found like remarkable i don't know yeah i haven't seen it i I heard a lot of people liked it um i definitely got to check it out and um i'll you know i'll see what 
what's up with that but um <laughs> you, <laughs> i don't know like to me it was like okay uh, that's fine yeah but i did i did hear a lot of people that thought it was just like they didn't even watch it you know like they just shut <laughs> well, it off well i you know well i rarely criticize movies that i haven't watched but uh yeah it was just okay and i don't know how, how we are with time but um one movie i did see that I'm not as critical towards because it's sort of like, hey, let's like make do it right. It was Justice League, um, the Snyder cut. It was better than the first, better than the uh, Josh Whedon cut. Whedon cut. Um, did I? But it was still clunky. I, I, I mean, I'm gonna be overcritical. The even the Snyder cut was. There was no flow. There was no. You know, they had chapters. I feel like it, they should have made it into like a mini series or like they had like five or six different episodes and each episode's an hour long and yeah. really flesh flesh out some of it. Um I have my take on the DC you know like you know, cinematic universe. I just feel like they're they're uh they wanna accomplish what the MCU did in like a handful of years when it took the MCU like twelve years from like Iron Man to like end game was like 12 years like, yeah you can't just hey let's just have one movie and just make everyone fall in love with these characters these characters are good batman obviously is cool um wonder woman they're all really good characters but like you gotta give them their stories especially cyborg and the the flash and which are the most important characters in the movie justice league yeah and i don't know i and i, I can literally <laughs> talk for a whole nother hour about yeah. justice league and I feel like dropping the ball. They've done a good job with Thor, mm -hmm. you know, like on his whole story. On oh, his you mean own. you mean um, Aquaman? Uh, no, no, I mean like just uh, I guess developing oh, like, the MCU. He's got yeah. I think four movies already, right? They have th four Thor. Like they have three Thor movies, but they're making the fourth. They're making the fourth. But okay, Thor is also right. in, uh, in the some of the Avenger movies, so he might have maybe like five or six different appearances by this point. Yeah, no, he's definitely. Um, been developed really well and like you said flash 2 is very important and he actually honestly intrigues me the most in the movie like um just kind of like i guess like on a personal level his acting you know he kind of like drew you in a little bit mm -hmm. um just with his backstory and they didn't really focus on him that much you know so yeah i would i mean obviously hindsight hindsight is 2020 but like they should have just like made just like how they made Wonder Woman her own movie. They should have given Flash his own movie and Cyborg their own movie to really. So when you actually watch Justice League, you care about the characters and all the backstory stuff is already out of the way. So you can just focus on like the bad guy. And then now you have the MCU with, you know, um, Thanos, like first time ever where like the bad guy was like it was more his story than anyone else's. Mm hmm. You know, especially the the, the first uh, and the there's Avengers Endgame, which is the last one, and then there's Avengers Infinity War. Infinity War is as much Thanos' story as any other story, and his sacrifice and what he was doing. So it was, um, I think, because I'm a huge fan of comics, and I think DC has way better. Like when it comes to the comics itself, the characters are way more interesting. Um, but when it comes to the movies, I think. Marvel is just like hitting out of the park. Not every time, but I mean, I wish they made Black Widow um, before she died. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen Endgame by this point, I'm sorry. It, yeah. She she dies in, in Endgame. So I just think it's weird that now they're making like a movie now when her character is past. We're just kind of. Were you into and uh, all the uh, X Men movies? No, 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 okay. I, I, it's just, no, uh, that's a whole nother episode, but Nick, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. To be honest, I think that's the one I was the most into as a kid because of the TV show, you know? Yeah. And, and Batman, like I was like X-Men, Batman. Um, but the movies, you know, I, I watched a couple of them. I didn't watch the last one, which was like, um, the girl from Game of Thrones. I forgot, I forget her name. Um, okay. And, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The. Yeah, I know that one. I haven't I didn't see that one. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. But um, yeah, no, I mean, X Men is also out there too. To me, X Men is kind of like the Halloween of like, oops, the Halloween of like comic book movies because it's like, which is what's canon, what's not canon. Wait, 
<laughs> Who's that character? <laughs> isn't isn't that character dead? No, that. Wait, same character, different actor. Magneto Wait. with eyebrows. <laughs> Magneto with eyebrows. <laughs> so that's my take on X Men. Is like I I like the X Men, um, but it because how they made a story arc and then like went back. I don't know. It's and I like the fact that Deadpool completely makes fun of that. Um, in his second in Deadpool two, he just makes it fun of it completely. They make a cameo and yeah, it's kind of yeah. interesting. But um, yeah, uh, I would. Lo- I mean, as a kid, I grew up watching X Men as well, like the show and reading the comics. But the movies are so confusing to follow, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, do you have any others that you'd want to put to the forefront that um, you checked out during? pandemic um one thing that i think every family can watch together i think it's called the mitchells versus the robots and it's a pg movie it's super fam- family friendly i th- don't know who made it. i think it was, it's not pixar why do i think pixar it's an animated film it's it's really corny in a good way i always find like these fam- family family movies kind of corny mm-hmm. but good way i watch it with my mom it was Good, grab popcorn, sit with family, watch it, and um, it. I mean, I I I, pro, I went into it just wanting to watch something kind of family friendly, and that's what you get. But um, don't expect any like Oscar winning um, <laughs> performances or, or voice acting. But it's one of those really fun, uh, feel good movies, I guess you can suppose. I mean, because we talked about like action and zombies and horror i guess it's nice to conclude with a nice family friendly movie so the mitchells versus the robots I think awesome that's what do you call it yeah yeah and i just um watched on hbo just concluded actually um a lot of times with these series what i do is i wait for it to end so then i could just binge watch all of it because that's how i love to do it yeah, me too. and then sometimes i'll get caught up where there's like three episodes and i'll watch three and then now i'm stuck now i gotta watch every week um, but the one that i just watched recently was mayor of east town and it's on HBO. Um, as we were talking about British actors, um, Kate Winslet takes the role, and She's she, great. yeah, and she takes the. It's I think near. It's in Philadelphia, East Town, but um, Pennsylvania, and but it's in the area where like they have like kind of a Delawarean accent type of oh. South Philly. So they have this. Um, it's tough to. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's like a very niche like accent, um, and they do a great job of it. Uh, it just adds to the story and just the story writing in general was great. Um, definitely check that out. It's on HBO max. Um, I really enjoyed that. And you got anything else? Oh yeah. The Mitchells and the robots versus the robots are, it's on Netflix. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Pretty much it. Yeah. And I have one more also to just a movie, um, just to go back to like, you know, thriller type stuff that I love. Um, if you want to look, you know, if, if you're not, week of the stomach or you know don't have a weak stomach definitely check out the movie apostle um it's more of like a cult like thriller um you know where there's like a community and uh, you know those have it's kind of like midsummer as well you know oh okay yeah. the nice, okay ritualistic I can, I can cult see yeah Crazy, so I mean crazy white people okay. <laughs> yeah that? so Apostle <laughs> definitely check it out um I can always appreciate a movie where there's a kill that like I've never seen before in my life and this one um they are creative I mean, not to get spoiler with it I'm not gonna tell you what it was but just watch don't look it up <laughs> they, they get creative I guess. they get really I, creative. I've, I've never seen it so I, I guess I'll they get really up. creative and um it was really one of the worst ones I've seen in years and I was like wow and it's not too graphic too so it's not like you know overkill but you know definitely it's check not, out as in it's not it's graphic not gory yeah it's not gory so, but, but you, you, you they they communicate what's happening very clearly but they're not like showing you all the g- blood and guts yeah, exactly it's okay. more like a traumatic event than okay <laughs> but um yeah so on that note um i guess you know we had a another great episode number nine um this one we wanted to give back more of like what's been entertaining us and what has not been entertaining us yeah <laughs> but um yeah if you guys you know leave some comments if you check out some of the stuff um and yeah just uh, let us know reach out to us if you have any questions we're gonna do an episode on fan questions coming up i guess yeah random fan questions <laughs> um but yeah uh watch army of the dead just to prove to me that it was a bad movie <laughs> 
All right, so this was episode nine with Words Are Tough. My name is Jose Rodriguez, and my co-host... David Diokendo. And see you next time. Words Are Tough. Bye-bye. Thank you.